Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us um, here at the Office of Public Instruction. My name is Rebecca Brown, and I am the ESSER Program Manager here at OPI. Um, and joining me today is Kristen Becker, one of our OPI auditors. Um, and I'll let Kristen introduce herself here in a second. Um, this afternoon, we are presenting about audit trail reports and compliance. Um, and just thank you for being here. This session is going to be recorded and posted on our OPI website. Um, so if you have any questions or you want to review it at a later date, um, it will be on our OPI website. So with that, um, I will let Kristen take it from here. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kristen Becker, and I'm the auditor for the Office of Public Instruction. I am replacing Dan Moody, who only has six work days left, not that he's counting, until he is officially retired and passes the baton on to me. This position of auditor is a bit of a misnomer as we don't truly audit. We are instead responsible for reviewing all audits, preparing risk assessments, helping with corrective action plans, and of course, other tasks that come along. Uh, in this training, I will discuss ESSER audit trail reports and compliance, prepare, prevent, and respond. Uh, those are the three keys that you need to remember with um, any time you have an audit. Next slide, please. ESSER audit compliance. Always be sure that with any use of ESSER funds, or any funds for that matter, be able to back it up, both in knowledge and documentation. The paper trail is so very important. Uh, we'll also go over audit findings, MCA code, audit types, and filing dates, and how ESSER affects audits in this section. And finally, uh, the seven standards of internal control. Next slide, please. OPI has statutory obligations to ensure that reports are complete. Uh, you'll see in that first MCA code, that is the one that separates us out from other entities because this code allows the superintendent to request specific things to be provided in school district audits, such as attendance reports, which we require. As you can imagine, other businesses are not going to have attendance reports, um, but we have to. Um, the next MCA code uh, requires OPI, ourselves, to prepare and file with local government services, a branch of Department of Administration, a list of school districts subject to audit under that previous code. Next slide, please. And on that note, be aware that these additional ESSER funds, which are all federal funds, could change the threshold in determining what type of audit you will be required to have. Um, however, also be aware that ESSER funds can be used to pay for any additional audit costs. So watch closely to see what kind of audit you will be required to submit. You should receive a letter from us, usually in the last month of the year or the first month of the following. Um, so watch those to determine for sure what kind of audit you will be required. Um, accounting rules aren't changed due to the receipt of ESSER money. But we would like to mention, um, for example, capital expenditure products, projects. These are um, expenditures that we see several findings each year for. If a project is going to be greater than $80,000, law requires three bids. Uh, this in, um, protects us from any kind of a lawsuit or any legal ramifications. If for some reason you're unable to get three bids for any reason, be sure to always document this and why you were unable to acquire those three bids. Next slide, please. What to do if there's an audit finding? Well, first of all, once you've determined whether the funds will need to be repaid or not, you will need to create a corrective action plan. This plan must be submitted within 30 days of your audit and must consist of a response to each of the following questions for each finding. So you'll have a paragraph, a small paragraph, for each finding that is um, reported on your audit. Um, those questions, of course, are why did the deficiency occur? What's being done to correct the deficiency? Who's responsible for correcting the deficiency? And when will the corrective measures be implemented? Now, we work closely in conjunction with local government services. As I said before, they are a branch of Division of Department of Administration. And these corrective action plans should be submitted to them, just as, though, just as your audits are by your auditor, um, through that audit submission portal. 
Um, we appreciate an email as well to OPI just to let us know so we can go grab it from that portal for our records. Uh, you'll find that Rebecca kindly um, put a link in the, the slides that you'll be receiving with this all or that you can also gather with this um, under submitted where it's read and underlined. That link will take you to that portal to submit those corrective actions to local government services. Next slide. <clears throat> Level of audit criteria. This is where uh, the ESSER funds may change your level of audit criteria that is required and the type of audit that you're required to have. Um, if you have $750,000 or less in revenues, you're required to have a, re a review done. Those are due June 30th. Uh, $750,000 or more in revenues is a regular state audit. Those are due June 30th. They're called yellow books. Um, if you have $750,000 or more in federal expenditures, then you are required to have a federal audit, and those are due March 31st. Uh, we recommend that you be sure to reach out to an auditor um, off of the auditor roster to set up a contract and schedule your audit as early as you can. We are short on auditors, and some districts are finding that they can't find an auditor to take on their annual audit if they aren't scheduled early enough. So be sure to do that right away. Next slide, please. Um, internal controls, they are not going to actually change. However, um, as I said before, you can use additional the ESSER funds for additional costs in audit. And um, we would recommend using those ESSER, some of those ESSER funds to clear up any inter internal control issues. Sometimes um, the audits will show a finding for a couple of years, and if you can take the extra time and money at this point to clear those up, you'll, you'll be glad that you did. Um, those internal controls, of course, are segregation of duties. We are um, aware that many school districts are small and they don't have a lot of staff to each person to do a separate task. So we do recommend using as many personnel as you can. And if you need be, have someone just come and sign that things have been done correctly, if they can check the, if the work or whatever the case is. Um, that will decrease some of your audit findings. Um, small offices can use a review of critical transactions, such as um, by the superintendent, school board, or other personnel. Um, access controls, you are going to be housing a lot of student records, personnel records, etc. Um, make sure to only allow access to those records by specific personnel who should have access to that. Don't let just anyone in there to see that information. That will cause you an audit finding. Um, physical audits, we recommend doing an actual self-audit. Um, review the reasons for your audit findings from the previous year and ensure that those issues have been corrected. And then look at some of your financial statement documents, your balance sheets, etc. And make sure, see if anything bounces and jumps out at you and says something's wrong here. A negative balance um, in an account that shouldn't have a negative balance would be a, a big one. Or um, compare with a prior year to see if the numbers are similar or at least follow suit with the prior year. Those are things that will help you to be able to find those audit issues and findings before they happen. Um, again, ensure that all transactions are documented, reconciled, and authorized with appropriate signatures. That is a huge one. Even if you do something that is wrong, at least if you have it documented, it can sometimes lessen the finding or it will at least provide the auditor with the reasonings and we can then help you make those corrections for the future. Um, we find a lot of findings on extracurricular activities. Be sure to audit, review, observe, watch them closely. They are not often monitored closely enough, and those are going to be a big issue if you find too many um, findings on the extracurricular activities. Um, accounting period cutoff review. Check yourself by reviewing your trial balance again to see if anything looks strange or stands out. And have written policies and procedures. Um, Policies and procedures, while it's a pain to write them, they are a huge help. They ensure that things are handled consistently each time, and they're very beneficial if you have a new employee. They can step in and they can take those procedures and they can use them to make sure they do it properly without someone standing over them. 
Um, and then I wanted to mention the OPI homepage under ESSER and manuals and tip sheets. There's desk audit manual with forms. There's a ton of things in that section, um, checklists of things to prepare for your desk audits. We recommend beginning doing these uh -huh. now as time may be too short to recreate records or documentation if it's needed later. Um, it's always better to have those up front and be prepared. Um, next slide. Standardized forms are, there are some standardized forms out there available. Um, we recommend that you use those. If you don't have one for what you want to do, create one and use it all the time. They help to keep you consistent in your filings and records and will um, possibly decrease some audit findings. And again, trial balances. I can't say it enough. Review for reasonableness and see if there's anything that jumps out at you. Negative balances, etc. cetera. Um, compare it to prior years to see if um, things are consistent the same and look similar to prior years. Um, periodic reconciliations. This is one of the most cost effective and sensible internal controls and we find that a lot of cash and clearing accounts are not reconciled every month as they should be. Um, reconciling your accounts will also show issues in time to make corrections and address questions that might come up when you are audited. Um, so when you reconcile your accounts, ensure you can explain any discrepancies or transactions that appear, appear out of the norm. Um, also include a signature attesting to the review each month. Um, that's going to show that you really did look at it and someone else looked at it with you and um, it, will, it will give some more confidence to the auditors about your books. Um, the last internal control that I'll discuss <laughs> is approval authority. Anytime you have a transaction, ensure that you have approval at the appropriate level. Obviously, you don't have to go to the highest person available for a small transaction, but anything that's bigger, make sure you have um, approval based on the importance of the transaction. For smaller schools, you may need to use all available people to ensure that the approvals are received, be it secretary, superintendent, school board member, um, all of the above. Make sure you have those approvals. Uh, next slide. If you go to the OPI auditing webpage, um, there is audit information for schools and auditors. Even though you're not going to be an auditor, I recommend you looking through those auditor resources. It will give you some indication of what the auditors are looking for, and it will help you to be able to prepare uh, for that audit. Um, there are all kinds of resources, requirements, and processes. Review these and familiarize yourself with these as soon as you can. Um, to ensure that you have time to um, make any corrections or document anything that's not quite the same or not quite what you should have done. Um, and it will also help familiarize you with anything different that will be required in your audit due to ESSER funds. Next slide. Um, I know that Rebecca has probably shown you this page in some of the other trainings and the videos, but be sure to visit opi.mt.gov and select the ESSER button. There is a ton of information and a lot of helpful things that you will find with regards to your ESSER funds and your accounting for those, as well as your audit. Um, next slide. And finally, if you have any questions, here are the contacts for assistance. Um, my name is there and email and phone number. You can call the auditor on contract with your school or just your district. Um, if you have school finance questions, contact Barb Quinn at her information. And of course, ESSER program questions, reach out to Rebecca. She's a wealth of knowledge and information. She can help you out. So um, I think that's all I have, Rebecca. If you want to take it from here, I will hang out for any questions that might come up. Awesome. Kristen, thank you again so much for being here with us. Um, we really appreciate your your input and um, we're grateful that we have someone to take over after Dan decides to retire in six days. Um, everyone who is in attendance today, thank you so much uh, for being with us, taking time out of your afternoon. Um, at this point, we're going to stop the recording and open it up for question and answer. Um, we all have we hope you all have a great weekend and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.